It is better to offer no excuse than a bad one. It is better to be alone and in bad company. If freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent we may be led like sheep to the slaughter. My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All I am I owe to my mother, I attribute my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I this day declare with the utmost sincerity, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Be courteous to all, but intimate with few, and let those few be well tried before you give them your confidence. True friendship is a plant of slow growth, and must undergo and withstand the shocks of adversity before it is entitled to appellation. Human happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected. Ninety-nine percent of failures come from people who make excuses. I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue, enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. There is nothing which can better deserve our patronage than the promotion of science and literature. Knowledge is in every country the surest basis of public happiness. Guard against the impostures of pretended patriotism. Labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire called conscience. Perseverance and spirit have done wonders in all ages. Associate yourself with men of good quality. If you esteem your own reputation, for tis better to be alone and in bad company. Let us therefore animate and encourage each other, and show the whole world that a freeman, contending for liberty on his own ground, is superior to any slavish mercenary on earth. Few men have virtue to withstand the highest bidder. A sensible woman can never be happy with a fool. Experience teaches us that it is much easier to prevent an enemy from posting themselves than it is to dislodge them after they have got possession. Happiness depends more upon the internal frame of a person's own mind than on the externals in the world. The harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. Worry is the interest paid by those who borrow trouble. The turning points of lives are not the great moments. The real crises are often concealed in occurrences so trivial in appearance that they pass unobserved. If we desire to avoid insult, we must be able to repel it. If we desire to secure peace, one of the most powerful instruments of our rising prosperity, it must be known that we are at all times ready for war. I conceive a knowledge of books is the basis upon which other knowledge is to be built. Paper money has had the effect in your state that it will ever have to ruin commerce, oppress the honest, and open the door to every species of fraud and injustice. To encourage literature and the arts is a duty which every good citizen owes to his country. Where are our men of abilities? Why do they not come forth to save their country? Be courteous to all, but intimate with few and let those be well tried before you give them your confidence. We must consult our means rather than our wishes. Real men despise battle, but will never run from it. Discipline is the soul of an army, 
It makes small numbers formidable, procures success to the weak, and esteem to all. To persevere in one's duty, and be silent is the best answer to calumny. We should not look back unless it is to drive useful lessons from past errors, and for the purpose of profiting by dearly bought experience. There is nothing so likely to produce peace as to be well prepared to meet the enemy. Let your heart feel for the afflictions and distress of everyone. I hold the maxim no less applicable to public than to private affairs, that honesty is always the best policy. If to please the people, we offer what we ourselves disapprove, how can we afterwards defend our work? Let us raise a standard to which the wise and honest can repair. The rest is in the hands of God. The great rule of conduct for us in regard to foreign nations is in extending our commercial relations to have with them as little political connection as possible. It is substantially true that virtue or morality is a necessary spring of popular government. The rule, indeed, extends with more or less force to every species of free government. No punishment, in my opinion, is too great for the man who can build his greatness upon his country's ruin. Gentlemen, you will permit me to put on my spectacles for I have grown not only gray, but almost blind in the service of my country. Be not glad at the misfortune of another, though he may be your enemy. Strive not with your superiors in argument, but always submit your judgment to others with modesty. It is absolutely necessary for me to have persons that can think for me as well as execute orders. Death, the abyss from, where no traveler is permitted to return. A bad war is fought with a good mind. A slender acquaintance with the world must convince every man that actions, not words, are the true criterion of the attachment of friends. Individuals entering into society must give up a share of liberty to preserve the rest. The basis of our political systems is the right of the people to make and to alter their constitutions of government. Arbitrary power is most easily established on the ruins of liberty abused to licentiousness. One of the expedients of party to acquire influence within particular districts is to misrepresent the opinions and aims of other districts. The time is near at hand which must determine whether Americans are to be free men or slaves. Wherein you reprove another be unblamable yourself, for example, is more prevalent than precepts. Decision-making, like coffee, needs a cooling process. Some day, following the example of the United States of America, there will be a United States of Europe. Liberty, when it begins to take root, is a plant of rapid growth. Every day the increasing weight of years admonishes me more and more that the shade of retirement is as necessary to me as it will be welcome. Let your conversation be without malice or envy, for it is a sign of a tractable and commendable nature, and in all cases of passion admit reason to govern. A man ought not to value himself of his achievements or rare qualities of wit, much less of his riches, virtue, or kindred. The great mass of our citizens require only to understand matters rightly to form right decisions. If the cause is advanced, 
indifferent is it to me where or in what quarter it happens. Experience teaches us that it is much easier to prevent an enemy from posting themselves than it is to dislodge them after they have got possession. To be prepared for war is one of the most effective means of preserving peace. Much was to be done by prudence, much by conciliation, much by firmness. Speak not evil of the absent, for it is unjust. Reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principles. Those who have committed no faults want no pardon. We are only defending what we deem our indisputable rights. Make sure you are doing what God wants. You to do then do it with all your strength. My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. I had rather be on my farm than be emperor of the world.